In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. You want to lift up your voice to the Lord tonight. That tonight, the Lord will enrich your life. Give you understanding. Give you comprehension. And that the word will do good in your life, in the family, and in the church, in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. That God's word will penetrate your heart. That God's will will be fulfilled in your life. His desire, his demand, his power, penetrating your life. Helping you to be who you ought to be. Bringing a revival in your heart. A revival in the family. A revival in every local church. A revival in the whole church together. And the penetration of the gospel in our nation. Prepare your heart to receive all that God has for you. So that you'll not just personally benefit from the word through you. The word will be a blessing to other people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for a revival time, a revival hour, a miracle service tonight. We're asking, Lord, that your word will bring power to every life, Amen. understanding to everyone. Amen. And Lord, as we perceive and as we see what you are telling us, there will be revival in every soul in Jesus' name. Amen. We ask, Lord, that you wake up your people. Give us heavenly understanding. To think like you think. To pray like you want us to pray. And to have faith like you want us to have faith. And to take hold and to grip everything you provided for us in Jesus' name. Use us mightily. Use us to bless our families. To bless our nation. To bless all people that come across our way in Jesus' name. Give us understanding tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I'm reading to you from Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. We're reading from verse 8. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Many times when we open the pages of the scriptures and we read the scriptures, we forget that we're looking at the very mind of God, at the thoughts of God, at the plans of God, at the program of God. And many times when the Lord calls us, and it says, here is the place to go. Here is the thing to do. We forget that God is higher than we are. Greater than we are. 
And what she promises is greater than understanding. And what she projects she wants to do is greater than what little plan we might have. But the Lord is reminding us tonight and he says, My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Keep that in mind and understand that he leads us and he controls us and he makes us to go in the way that will bring unexpected blessings upon ourselves, upon our families, upon our church, and upon our community. I'm coming to Hosea chapter 3. And I'm reading here from verse 5. Hosea chapter 3, verse 5. Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. As he mentions the latter days, you understand, it's making the difference between the former days and the latter days. That is, things he did not do, and things he didn't think about in the earlier days, in the former days, he might do, he will do, even in your life today in Jesus' name. Hosea chapter 14, and we're reading from verse 9. Hosea chapter 14, reading from verse 9. It says, Who is wise, and he shall understand these things. Who is wise, and he shall understand these things. That is, when God begins to work, and when God begins to reveal his plan, and when God begins to direct and begins to control, it says, the wise will understand, and the prudent, he shall know them, for the ways of the Lord are right. Men may not understand, even believers may not understand, but the ways of the Lord are right. The just shall walk in them, but the transgressors shall fall therein. You will not be a transgressor. Obadiah, Chapter 1, only one chapter. Obadiah is after Amos. I'm reading from verse 17. It says, But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness. I thought somebody there would say, Amen. Amen. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. I will possess. Some families there you will possess. Our church will possess in Jesus' name. We need to discover the divine pathway into the latter day blessings the Lord is revealing to us from his word. Tonight we're looking at the divine pathway to latter day blessings. The divine pathway to latter day blessings. I'm coming to Joel chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 1. Joel chapter 2. We're looking at verse 1. It says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is near at hand. Verse 11, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word, for the day of the Lord is great. I'm very terrible. Who can abide it? Come to verse 12. Therefore, also now, therefore, because the Lord is going to do great things, therefore, because the Lord is great, greater than your imagination, therefore, because the day of the Lord is near, 
Therefore, because his wonders, he wants to begin to reveal, to reveal in your life, to reveal in my life, to reveal in our families, to reveal in our local churches, because his power is going to be made bare the hidden resources of the Lord. He wants to shove up, he wants to overflow in your life. He says, therefore, also now, says the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. It says, this is not the time to be reasoning of the past. Why did this happen in the past? Why didn't I get that in the past? Why didn't I hold that in the past? Why didn't this come to me in the past? It says, it's not the day for complaining, you will not complain. It's not the day for wondering, you will not wonder. It's not the way for the day for confusion. There'll be no confusion in your heart. It says, Turn unto me with all your heart and rend your heart in verse 13 and not your garments. And turn unto the Lord your God. Turn unto the Lord your God. It's talking to people in his own cho chosen nation. He's talking to the sinners. He's talking to the backsliders. He's talking to the believers. He's talking to the saints. He's talking to the ministers. He's talking to the leaders. And he says, turn unto me with all your heart. He goes on to say, for he is a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger, and of great kindness. And he repenteth him. He changes his mind concerning the evil. Who knows if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him. He will come tonight. He'll touch you tonight. He'll visit you tonight. And he will leave a blessing in your life, even tonight in Jesus' name. Even a meat offering and a drink offering. It says, unto the Lord your God, blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a first. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Set apart the congregation. Lift up, stir up the congregation. Preach to the congregation. Alert the congregation. Call the congregation to seek in the face of the Lord. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breasts and let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Then he goes on, he says in verse 17, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine inheritance to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Unbelievers will not rule over you. The people of dark powers will not rule over you. Idol worshippers will not rule over you. And those who is a bad, bad plan from village, from the forest, from the river, they will not rule over you. Wherefore shall they say among the people, where is their God? If anybody has been asking you, where is your God? They will say the power of God in your life. The provision of God in your life. And they will see the great things the Lord will do in your life, even from tonight in Jesus' name. Come to verse 21. Fear not, O land. Fear not, ye people of God. Be glad and rejoice. Nothing will take away your joy. <laughs> Nothing will dampen your gladness. For the Lord will do great things. When? For the Lord will do great things. Where? In whose life? In whose family, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree 
at the vine do yield their strength, fruitfulness in your life. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately. The former blessings were moderate. This one is going to overflow. This one is going to bring surplus in your life. And it's going to bring overwhelming blessings in your life in Jesus' name. A flood. I said a flood. A flood of mighty blessings, showers of blessings in your life in Jesus' name. And it will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat. And the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worms, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty. And be satisfied. Satisfaction has come. Yeah. Sufficiency has come. Yeah. The supernatural power of God will wipe everything negative out of your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. Yeah. Did you hear that? The Lord is going to deal with you in a wonderful way, a joyful way, a cheerful way, a way that will bless supernatural overflowing blessing in your life in Jesus' name. And my people shall not be ashamed. Are they there tonight? The people who will not be ashamed, I said I did there tonight. The people who are going to experience the supernatural power of God, are they there tonight? Believers, are believers there tonight? The people of God shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. Once again, my people shall not be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days, I will pour out of my spirit. Verse 32, and it shall come to pass. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. A good church, amen. Yeah. Tonight, as we look at this passage in particular, that is Joel chapter 2, I'm talking to you on the divine pathway to latter day blessings. Three things we're looking at. Number one, our preparation as submissive believers. Our preparation as submissive believers believers the lord himself has called us and he's saying he's giving us some directions there's some directives there he's giving us some promises and then the preparation that we ought to make and he calls us to supplication he calls us to intercession he calls us to prayer he calls us to repentance he calls us to rising up and following the way and the path of the Lord, our preparation as submissive brothers or brethren. Number two, the promise of super abundant blessings. 
the promise of super abundant blessings. Point number three, the power and supernatural benefits. The power and supernatural benefits. We're coming back to point number one, our preparation as submissive brethren. The church of the living God, the people of God that are called to pray and we're called to seek the face of the Lord for ourselves, for our nation, for our communities, for the whole of society, so that through us, the blessing of God will flow into the lives of people, the people we know and the people we don't know. The whole nation come back to Joel chapter 2, reading here from verse 12. It says, therefore also now, says the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart. Here is the Lord calling us to solemn assembly. Here is the Lord calling us to real fervent praying. Here is the Lord calling us to sincere repentance. And it says, thus says the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart. And with fasting and with weeping. And with mourning, and rend your heart, not your garment. It says we should go beyond the external, and go beyond the visible, and go beyond religious activity, and let our repentance come from the depths of our heart. It says, rend the heart and not the garment. Break up your fallow ground. Any carelessness any superficiality, any worldliness, any carnality, it says, wash it up. And it says, for he is gracious. It's saying that the Lord our God is gracious and merciful. He is slow to anger and of great kindness and he repenteth him of the evil. What he means by that is, if he has planned, if he has purposed, if he has proclaimed, if he has pronounced any judgment on any group of people, on an individual, on a family, on a tribe, on a community, on a nation, if the people of God will seek the face of the Lord, he will turn that judgment around. The Lord will have mercy on every individual, mercy on every family, mercy on every community and mercy upon our country in jesus name in the peace of our country we are peace in the progress of our country we are progress and in the promotion of our country out of the dungeon out of darkness into the marvelous light of the lord it's in that promotion we ourselves we have progress and you are going to have prosperity that's why it goes on to say, who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him. He's talking about a blessing upon the whole nation, a blessing upon the whole community, a blessing upon every family. And then he goes on to say, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Let those who are sleeping wake up. Let those who are sluggish rise up. And let those who are lethargic, let them become zealous for the Lord. That this is a moment of calling upon the Lord. It says, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders. It says, gather the children. And even the very little children still sucking the breast. And let the bridegroom go forth out of a chamber and the bride out of a closet. In verse 17, let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep be between the porch and the altar. He's talking about heart-rendering repentance. He's talking about heartfelt repentance. He's talking about a kind of rep repentance that comes from the depths of the heart. And it says, we will pray, we should pray in that repentance that the Lord shall spare thy people. Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine inheritance to reproach. That the heathen shall rule over them. 
wherefore should they say among the people where is their God? That question will no more be asked for you. They will know that you serve a living God, a mighty God, a God who is able to bless and who is going to bless you. As he calls everyone to repentance, who are the people that God is expecting to repent? That if we will take the word of God seriously and repent as he has called us to repentance, that great blessings will come. On surpassing, a, a surpassing blessing will come. Great, mighty blessings will come. Number one, personal repentance. That means you as an individual, you want the Lord to bring his blessing upon your life, upon your family, upon your local community, and upon your church, and upon our church altogether, and upon our country. Number one is personal repentance. I'm looking at Second Peter chapter 3, reading from verse 9. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. All those promises who have read in Joel chapter 2 and other promises too. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but his long suffering to us what? not willing that any should perish not willing that any should be lost not willing that any should die and go to hell not willing that any whoever that person is you or myself or any other person high or low a king or just a citizen, not willing that any should perish, but that, how many people now? All shall come to repentance, personal repentance. Number two, parental repentance. There are times the way the parents have lived their lives, they have not shown a good example, an uplifting example, a righteous example. They have not been exemplary before their children, mothers before their daughters, and fathers before their sons. And because of that, these children, the younger generation, they're going astray. Home training is lacking, and home education is lacking, and family devotion is lacking, family instruction is lacking. And because of that, our sons, our daughters, our young people are going astray. And the Lord is asking, number one, for personal repentance. Number two is asking for parental repentance. We're coming to Lamentation chapter 2. Lamentation chapter 2. And I'm reading here from verse 18. Lamentation chapter 2, reading from verse 18, their heart cried unto the Lord, O wall of the daughter of Zion, let tears run down like, like a river, and day and night give thyself no rest. Let not the apple of thine eyes cease, that is, your heart is broken. Over your children, you say, yes, they were born in the church. You were born, I was already born again, and my wife was born again when the children were born. But now they've gone this way, that way. You must accept your fault. You must accept your negligence. You must go before the Lord in parental repentance. In verse 19, in verse 19 it says, Arise, cry out in the night. In the beginning of the watches, pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children. He's talking to the parents. Lift up your heart. Lift up your hand, rent your heart, be sorrowful, go on your knees because of your young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. It's calling us to number one, personal repentance. Number two, parental repentance. Number three, the prince's repentance. The prince over the land, the prince over the community, the king, the ruler, the leader over a community of people if the leadership has not 
given a good example. If the leadership has not led us in the right way, and now the nation suffers or the people suffer, then even as we have personal repentance, we have the parental repentance, we also have the princess repentance. I'm coming to First Chronicles chapter 21. First Chronicles chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Satan stood up against Israel. There are many people because they do not see what is behind the curtain. They do not see what Satan was planning for Israel or for any nation of any society. Anything that happens, they put all the blame on David. They put all the blame on this and that. And David eventually realized that he had been pushed into something he shouldn't have done. But the revelation must come. Somebody must get to that David and make him to understand, look at your action and look at what your action has produced. And now he tells us in verse 17, verse 17 of that same chapter, it says, And David said unto God, Is it not I that commanded the people to be numbered? Even I it is that have sinned. Here is uh, the prince's repentance. The prince, the king, over the people is now repenting. And he says, I've done evil indeed. But as for these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, O Lord, my God, be on me and on my father's house, but not on thy people, that they should be pledged. Number one, personal repentance. You must take this serious and go before the throne of God and say, yes, I will repent. And God will answer your prayer. Parental repentance. And the Lord will rescue all our children from all the waywardness in Jesus' name. And the princess repentance. Number four is the priest's repentance. The priest's repentance. Priestly repentance priestly repentance we're coming back to joel joel chapter 2 in joel chapter 2 i read here from verse 12 wherefore also now says the lord turn ye even to me with all your heart with fasting with weeping and with mourning and rend your heart and not your garment and turn that's repentance and turn and turn unto the Lord your God. Come to verse 17. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. Let the priests also come before the Lord. Rend your heart. And tear yourself away from everything that is wrong. And seek the face of the Lord in genuine repentance. And then... He will deliver his people from the hands of the heathens in Jesus' name. Somebody said amen over there. Amen. Number five is the prodigal's repentance. The prodigal's repentance. The prodigal is the one who had been in the father's house. And it was in the comfort of the father's house. In the fellowship of the father's house. In the provision of the father's house. In the privileges of the father's house. But one day, he said, I'm going. I'm leaving. He had, he had his own reason. He wanted to go outside. Outside the umbrella of the protection of the father, of the father and the family. He went away and then he suffered for it. Became a prodigal, a prodigal son. But you see, the prodigal must also repent. The father is not going to go to him in the far country. The prodigal's repentance. We're coming to Luke chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 15, verse 18. I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. 
and he arose. It's not just that he planned to do it, he did it. It's not just a proposal, he did it. It's not just I'm thinking, I'm going to repent, he actually did it. When you hear the word of God, there is just one thing to do. Just to be, just to be. If the Spirit of God is knocking at the door of your heart and is saying, you need to repent of this, you need to repent of this and repent of that, at that very moment is the time to make up your mind, I will arise and go. And he arose and then we are told and came to his father. And when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and bring it on him, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. He came back to all the provision of the Father again. Every one of us were coming back to all the abundant provision of our Father's house in Jesus' name. Personal repentance, parental repentance, the prince's repentance, the priest's repentance, the prodigal's repentance, the prophet's repentance. You see, the prophets are not only to warn us, the two, they're to repent. The prophets are not just to declare the word of God to us and say, hear the word of the Lord. Here is prophecy that has its place at a time. But as we look at the whole nation, as you look at the whole church, as you look at the people of God, you come before the Lord. And you're not coming as a holy, holy prophet. You're not coming as a better than them all prophet. You're not coming as a person that say, my life is impeccable. My life is holy. My life is righteous. That may be so, but leave that behind now and come for the nation and come for the people and come for the for zion we're coming to daniel daniel chapter 9. in daniel chapter 9 i'm reading here you know the story of daniel you know the life of daniel he was uh, he was faultless he was spotless he was sinless he did everything properly a courageous man, a conscientious man, a righteous man. But all the same, when it came for intercession, it was a different thing entirely. The prophet's repentance. Daniel chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 3. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting you know, and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God. I made my confession. I made my confession. It was standing identified with the nation. And it was, it was not saying, Oh Lord, you know how righteous I am, how holy I am, and how faithful I am, and you know how uncompromising I am. That's not this, not the place for that now. I made my confession and said, Oh Lord, the great and the dreadful God. Keeping, the co keeping covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned. He didn't say they have sinned. Bad people. That's why they came to Babylon. They have sinned. They are backsliding. It's, no, not at all. This is the prophet's repentance. And it says we have sinned and we have committed iniquity. And I've done wickedly, and I've rebelled even by departing from the, thy precepts and from thy judgment. Verse 6, neither have we akined unto thy servants the prophets, which speak in thy name to our kings and to our princes and to our fathers and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteous, be righteousness belongeth unto thee. But unto us, he didn't say unto them, he counted himself as part of them. He was a beloved prophet in the sight of the Lord, a beloved man. All the same days, Daniel, greatly beloved of the Lord, said unto us, belongeth confusion of faces 
as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries whither thou hast driven them. It says, because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. It goes on now to verse 11. Ye, all Israel, have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, because is put upon us, and the oath that is written in the law, Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. That's the prophet's repentance, not the generality of the people. All the people, without exception, each one has uh, gone before the Lord repenting, and the parents have gone before the Lord repenting, and the priests and the priests have gone before the Lord repenting, the prodigal, the prophet, they've gone before the Lord repenting. Now the old people together, all the people together in Second, second Chronicles, the people's repentance. Second Chronicles chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7, we're looking at verse 14. If my people, all the people now, if my people, all the people that came, that claim to belong to the Lord, if my people, if nobody will act or pretend holy, holy person, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. That's the repentance there. Then I will hear from heaven. The Lord will hear in heaven. Then he says, I will forgive their sin. He will forgive the sin of everyone as we repent. He's going to forgive in Jesus' name. And tell me what uh, finalizes it there. I want to hear you <laughs> say that again. <laughs> Let your inner man hear you saying it. <laughs> you know what? Whenever there's a problem in the nation, poverty, crime, violence, farming, unemployment, challenges, Difficulties, Christian people, church people, they just stay a look. We're nice, they are bad. We're good, they're evil. Look at what these people are doing. They're bringing all these things upon us. And then we're praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. But the prayer, bless me. Lord, change my circumstance. Lord, do this for me. Lord, do that for me. But there's general famine. If that general famine is not addressed, all the provisions for individuals are going to be affected. If the economy is down, and your own economy, private, personal work is going to be affected. And so we need to understand just getting a personal blessing is not enough at such a time like this. And if there's going to be any change, the church is not going to hide behind the curtain somewhere and then throwing information and throwing messages to the people outside there. It's your fault. We're suffering because of you. We're suffering because of you. Look at this now. Children cannot go to school. Look at this now, this and that. Everybody must take part in the repentance. And the good thing will start from us. And the good thing will start from you. This church as a church, if we take everything we've read in the scriptures, we know the scriptures. This is deep and live. What kind of church? I said this is deep and live. And we can call it higher life, spiritual life, Bible church. And because we believe the Bible, and we read the Bible, and we study the Bible, and we hear the word of God from the Bible, we will do what the Lord is telling us to do. There will be healing in this land. Yeah. Verse 14, if my people 
which are called by my name shall humble themselves. We have to humble ourselves. Come down from that ivory tower and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I may. Then perhaps, tell me what you find in your Bible. I will hear from heaven. God will answer our prayer. Things will turn around in this stage. Things will turn around in this nation. Through you. What is the person I'm talking to there? I say through you. Through me. Say through me. God will make you a change agent in Jesus' name. I will forgive their sin. Can God forgive sinners? Can God forgive government officials? Oh, I can't hear my people now. Can God forgive even those in the prison? Can God forgive those on the streets? It says, I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. We'll be talking about healing of our body and healing of our families and healing of those who have a kind of a, a problem. But now the healing is coming for our land. Yeah. You'll be alive to see it. Yeah. I said you'll be alive to see it. It will not happen behind you. It will happen at your own time. I pray God will prolong your life. He'll prolong your days. You will see. Point number two now. The promise of super abundant blessings. The promise of super abundant blessings. I'm coming to Joel chapter 2 verse 21. Joel chapter 2 verse 21. Fear not, O Lord. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, a children of Zion in the house today, Children of Zion, are you present here tonight? Be glad then and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately. And he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat. And the vase shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore. Is God a liar? And I will restore. Will God do it? Is God a faithful God? Is he a covenant keeping God? He will do it in your life. He will restore everything the church might have lost. He will do it in Jesus' name. The glory of the latter days will come in Jesus' name. If you say it, if I say it, if we agree together, if we say it in the church, if we say it at home, if we say it when we are talking to each other, if we say it in the office, whatever the people of the world, whatever they are saying, they do not have the final say, we have the final say. He says, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm, the palmer worm, and the caterpillar, my great army, which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty. If you have lost your job, you are getting greater jobs back. If you have lost anything, you are getting multiple fold back in Jesus' name. And be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. He will deal wondrously with you. 
and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know, and ye shall know, and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, that I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Look at verse 21. This is abiding peace, abiding peace. You know, as you look at the nation, as you look at the insecurity, and as you look at the problems that plague the nation, it's like there is a conflict everywhere, battle everywhere, confusion everywhere. There is a palpitation of heart everywhere. It appears there's no peace. But now, verse 21, abiding peace. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Verse 22, agricultural productivity agricultural productivity we will have enough to eat in every family enough to eat in every community enough to eat in every state look at this verse 22 agricultural productivity be not afraid ye beast of the field for the pastures of the wilderness do spring for the tree beareth her fruit, and the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. It is coming. Verse 23, abundant provision. Abundant provision. When the rivers are overflowing, you cannot remain dry. You will not remain weary. Look at verse 23, abundant provision. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. Be glad then, who are to be glad? I said, who are to be glad? Ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will, he will, he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. <laughs> Verse 24 now is assured prosperity. Assured prosperity. Give me a good amen for your own life. Amen for your provision. Amen for your prosperity. You will not be a borrower, you'll be a giver. You will not be living from hands to mouth, you'll open your mouth wide and the Almighty God will feel it. Verse 24, assured prosperity, and the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. Verse 25, amazing providence, amazing providence, and I will restore to you, and I will restore to you. Let me read it for myself. And he will restore to me the years that the locusts have eaten. And the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Verse 26 All sufficient plenty. Look at the person beside you there and say, All sufficient plenty. When I visit in your house, there will be plenty to serve, there will be plenty that will remain. Plenty. I'm looking for somebody. Plenty. What are you? Plenty. Look at verse 26. All sufficient plenty. In verse 26, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people. Mention your name, mention your name, mention your name. And my people, my brother there, what's your name? My sister there, what's your name? You will never be ashamed. Verse 27, almighty presence. The presence of the almighty. When you go out, he'll go with you. When you come in, it'll come with you. When you go to the office, it'll go with you. 
no evil will touch your life. Verse 27, verse 27, and you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people, my brother there, and my people, my sister there, and my people shall never, never, never be ashamed. Somebody shout, Amen. Your time of blessing has started. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee. Answer prayer tonight. Prevailing prayer tonight. Overcoming prayer tonight. Answer coming from heaven tonight. Call out to me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Verse 6, verse 6, Behold, I will bring it health and cure. You are healed in Jesus' name. I will cure them, and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Verse 9, and it shall come, and it shall be to me for a name of joy, a praise, and honor before all nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good that I do unto them. They will hear. Your friends will hear. The people who are not so friendly, they will hear. Your neighbors will hear. And those who are far away, they will hear of the good that the Lord will do unto you. And they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I proclaim and procure unto it. Your time has come. Joel chapter 2, point number 3 now. The power and the supernatural benefits. We're coming to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. Also upon the servants, and upon the handmaids in those days, tell me, I will pour out my spirit, verse 32, and it shall come to pass. In your life, it shall come to pass. In your family, it shall come to pass. In our church, it shall come to pass. In our nation, it shall come to pass. In this state of ours, it shall come to pass that whosoever, that whosoever, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Everyone that opens his mouth tonight to call on the name of the Lord, deliverance will come from every direction unto you in Jesus' name. Deliverance in your soul. Deliverance in your spirit, deliverance in your mind, deliverance in your brain, deliverance in your body, and all those things that are hiding there and they want to hold you captive, deliverance has come for you in Jesus' name. Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, my sister wipe away those tears, deliverance has come. My son, my daughter there, wipe away the tears. Deliverance has come. All the chains that bind you, all the yokes that come upon your life, tonight, tonight, tonight. Your own deliverance has come in Jesus' name. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said, 
as the Lord has said, it cannot lie. As the Lord has said, it cannot fail. As the Lord has said, he cannot deny himself. As the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Everyone that the Lord shall call, if you know the Lord has called you, he called you to salvation. He called you to his only begotten son, and you have responded. You have repented. You are believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, all that tremor that the Lord shall call, the Lord will bring deliverance. As you look at these verses, when it says, I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh, What's the result of that? Number one, the purpose of the Spirit. The purpose of the Spirit. What's the purpose? He shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. Every weakness will come out of your life. All the kind of weariness, everything will get out of your life. In Jesus' name, power. I said power. In your soul, in your spirit, in your mouth, in your hands, in your walking, in your standing, in your evangelism, in your prayer, power in Jesus' name. The purpose of the Spirit. Number two, peace through salvation. Peace through salvation. The Spirit of God is involved in our salvation. Because it says, except ye be born of water and of the Spirit, of the Spirit, ye cannot be, ye cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Peace through salvation. Number three, purity in sanctification. You see, the Spirit of God is involved in our holiness. Is the Holy Spirit? Is the Spirit of holiness? Is the Spirit of sanctification? It will sanctify you through and through. Your thoughts will be sanctified. Your actions will be sanctified. Your mind will be sanctified. And your whole entire life will be sanctified in Jesus' name. In the private sanctification, in the public sanctification, on the pulpit sanctification, at the pew sanctification, anywhere you go, the holiness of the Spirit will follow you in Jesus' name. Number four, the perception of Scripture. The perception of Scripture. When the Spirit is calm, He will remind you of all that the Lord has taught you. And then He will reveal to you things to come. He will give you understanding, perception of the Scripture. Number five, progress in soul winning. Progress in soul winning. You will not be buried. The power of the Lord will overshadow your life. And that power of the Lord will give you the wisdom to talk and to speak to the people that are waiting. When they hear your word, they will repent. They will turn in Jesus' name. <laughs> Number six, stronghold. Power over stronghold. Power over stronghold. Every stronghold that has stood in your way. The power of the Holy Ghost is coming upon your life. The dynamite of the Spirit will blow them off from your life in Jesus' name. Number seven, protection from evil spirits. Protection from evil spirits. Behold, I give unto you power. What is the person there? Don't cry anymore now. Don't weep anymore. Don't complain anymore. They come, they come. Stand up and face them. I say stand up and face them. Before you say in Jesus' name. Before you finish, they are gone. God is going to give you protection and is going to make sure that you keep on standing. Nothing will defeat you again in Jesus' name. <laughs> Number eight, prevention of sickness. Prevention of sickness. You'll be encircled by the fire of the Holy Ghost. All those rats, all those cockroaches, all those lizards, all those uh, diseases, all those sicknesses, as they are coming, 
the fire that encircles your life will burn them up. They cannot pass through the fire of the Holy Ghost and then come into your life. There will be prevention of sicknesses in your life in Jesus' name. I see somebody healthy in front of me. Somebody strong in, in front of me. All those incurable diseases, they will not make your house a residence. Your body will not be a temple for them. They are gone. I said they are gone. From the top of your head to the tip of your toe. Your eyes will not be deep. Your voice will not be weak. Your body will not collapse. Because the Spirit of God will grant you prevention of sicknesses. Number nine, penetration into the supernatural. You didn't hear that one. <laughs> penetration into the supernatural. You will penetrate every supernatural realm arena around you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Number 10, purification of speech. A new tongue. A new language. A powerful language. A language that will subdue everything around you in Jesus' name. Purification of speech. Number 11, possession of a sufficiency. Possession of a sufficiency. No lack anymore. No scarcity anymore. Every need of your life by the Spirit is met in Jesus' name. Number 12, the promise of sustainable spirituality sustainable you get it here you're going to keep it on the road you'll keep it in the office you'll keep it the freshness of the spirit will be upon your life sustainable 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 tonight is the beginning of a new day in your life a new blessing in your life. Multiplied blessings in your life. Not only in your life, in your family. In our church. In this, our stage. And in our nation. Through you. Through me. Through us together. Blessings will overflow in this nation. Fear not then, O land. Be glad, rejoice. This time, the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, and the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad, be glad, be glad, ye children of Zion, and rejoice. In the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately. And he will cause to come down for you. The rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. The floors shall be full of wheat. The vat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore unto you. The years that the locusts have eaten. My people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in this place in Mount Zion, in this place at the headquarters shall be deliverance, says the Lord, in the remnant whom the Lord has called. Has the Lord called you today? Have you responded to the call of God? Rise up and open your mouth before the Lord. Blessings today. 
overflowing blessing, spiritual blessing, natural blessing, every form of blessing. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. Let, be, let there be repentance, personal repentance. Anything the Spirit of God is convincing you, convicting you about. Personal repentance, parental repentance. Look at the lives of your children. Look at the way they are going. And see the areas where you have not lived up to standards before your boys, before your girls, your sons, and your daughters. Parental repentance. The princess repentance. You are a leader over a community, a leader, a captain, a director, a manager. You are the prince over there in that company. If things are not going well, the priest will have to come before the Lord. Repentance. Priestly repentance. Priestly repentance as a priest of the Lord. Repentance. Look at the congregation of the Lord under your care. They suffer. They need. They are ignorant. The scarcity. And you have not been the way you ought to be to them. Bringing them and bringing their knees before the Lord, priestly repentance. The prodigal's repentance. How far have you gone? In which way have you gone away from fellowship? In which way have you deviated from scriptural conviction? The prodigal's repentance. Jonah was a prodigal. He went away from the Lord. From the path of duty. From the calling the Lord had given him. Pray God, prophet. Repentance is necessary. The prophet's repentance on behalf of the nation, on behalf of Zion. On behalf of the church. On behalf of the state. The prophets. Repentance. The people's repentance. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and not act holy, holy, and not act holier than thou, and not act and better than them all, and not act like they are sinners, I'm a saint. I cannot get to them beneath my dignity and my position to go to them. I'm high. They are low in the dungeon of sin. Repent. The people's repentance. Repentance means turning away from everything 
God from such. Turning away from all the carelessness, careless talk, careless act, careless behavior, unbelief, ignorance, darkness of mind, turning away from them, repentance. Complete the cycle. The cycle of repentance. Personal. Parental. The princes. The priests. The prodigals. The prophet. The people. Repent of selfish prayer. Me and me and me alone. Without remembering in the peace of your country where you enjoy peace. In the prosperity of the land where you have a share in the prosperity. In the progress of the stage of the nation where you make progress. And now claim the promise of God. Abide in peace, fear not. It says he'll take all the sources of fear away. Productivity in the land. Is the productivity that will yield provision and plenty and prosperity. Bring our nation before the Lord. Bring the stage before the Lord. He has promised abundant provision. He has given assurance of prosperity. Amazing providence. All sufficient plenty and the presence of the Almighty. Stand on the promises. They cannot fail. Believe the promises. They cannot fail. Claim the promises, not just for yourself, not just for your family, for the church, for the state, for the nation. Plead with the Lord, prevail with the Lord. That he will not forget his promise. He will not forget his people. He will not forget the land. Plead with him to show favor on his people, on his creatures. on our country. Let him remember our land. Lord, remember Lord, have mercy. Lord, fulfill your word.
In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, those who believe the Lord has answered their prayers, they said, the Lord has answered your prayer. Blessings upon your personal life. Blessings upon your family. Blessings upon every local church. Blessings upon our church altogether. Blessing on our stage, Lagos stage. Blessing on the land of the country of Nigeria. Raise up those hands. Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you because of the calling you have given us tonight that we are to repent. Every section of society, every person, every individual, we pray, O oh Lord, accept our repentance in Jesus' name. Amen. Repentance of every person. Amen. And repentance of all your people. Amen. And repentance of the whole church. And repentance on behalf of the nation. Receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. You said you'll hear from heaven. You said you'll forgive us. You said you'll forgive your people. Forgive in Jesus' name. Amen. And you said you'll heal our land. Heal our land. Amen. Heal our land. Amen. Bless our land. Amen. Prosper our land. Amen. Everything we've missed, everything we've lost, let there be a mighty restoration upon the whole land in Jesus' name. Amen. Upon everyone here tonight, Pour out your blessing. Break every yoke. Destroy every work of the devil. I will pray, Lord, the open doors you have given, those doors of opportunity will never be closed again in Jesus' name. Peace for everyone. Progress for everyone. Plenty for everyone. Prosperity for everyone. And Lord, I pray every good desire of the people of God, you grant unto each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Your people will never be ashamed again. Amen. Restoration upon every life. Amen. Recovery upon every life. Amen. Abundance of your blessing upon every life, even from tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. As your people go away, we pray, Lord, we still continue in the spirit of repentance. And we continue to possess all our possession in Jesus' name. Lord, we will see your blessing upon every life, upon every family, upon our whole church. We'll see your blessing upon this stage. We'll see your blessing a turning around upon our nation in Jesus' name. Lord, affirm the blessing. Amen. Confirm the blessing. Amen. And let the joy of the Lord be the strength of all your people. Amen. As your people go back home, protect them. Amen. Let your blessings follow after them. Amen. Lord, surprise everyone with supernatural miracles. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 